Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Last week, I reviewed the Ender 3 S1 Pro, and many of you suggested that I make a video comparing the Prusa MK3S Plus with the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Like many people have said, the Prusa MK3S Plus is the gold standard for hobbyist 3D printers. It uses many brand name parts, the print quality is really good, the print speed is relatively fast, and it uses a Prusa slicer that is tailor-made to Prusa printers. It provides a full package for 3D printing. Last year, I made a video comparing the Prusa MK3S Plus and the basic Ender 3, pointing out the differences based on hardware cost. If you're interested in that video, I put the link down below. When people ask me if they should buy the Prusa MK3S Plus or the new Ender 3 S1 Pro, there really is no simple answer. It all depends on your budget, what you are looking for, and what you think is most important. So in this video, I will compare nine different factors of both printers and give them a score. Some factors are more important as the price, hardware, and print quality would probably be the most important factors to consider for most people. So I will score these factors from one to 20. Other factors that are a little bit less important, like the print speed, firmware, and slicer will be scored from one to 10. For the rest, like workflow, documentation, support, and power consumption, I will score them from one to five. So the best score a printer can get is 100. First, I would like to talk about the price, as this is the first factor that most people would consider. The Ender 3 S1 Pro costs around $500, and it is free shipping no matter if you order from Amazon or other online sellers. So all you have to pay is $500. Once you receive the printer, it just requires a few simple steps to put it together, which will take around 10 to 20 minutes. For the Prusa MK3S Plus, there are two versions. The DIY kit version costs $750 with $50 shipping, so it will cost you $800 to get the printer. This DIY version contains many loose parts that require five to 10 hours to put together, depending on your experience and knowledge on 3D printers. There is another assembled version that costs $1,000 plus $125 shipping. So the fully assembled MK3S Plus will cost $1,125. I didn't buy the assembled version, but it's a fully assembled printer. You just need to snap the filament holder on top and then it's ready to use. So in terms of price, I will give 15 points out of 20 to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and 10 points to the Prusa MK3S Plus kit and eight points to the fully assembled version. For assembly ease, I will give 4.5 out of five to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and I will only give three points to the Prusa MK3S Plus kit as it's really challenging for a 3D printer beginner to put the kit version together. However, I will give five points for the fully assembled MK3S Plus as there is nothing to assemble. For hardware, we have a longer list to compare. The most important parts are the motion system, extruder, and hot end. For the motion system, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses rubber pulley wheels, while the Prusa MK3S Plus uses linear rods and Mizumi bearings, so the motion system of the Prusa is obviously better. For the extruder, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses its own Sprite extruder, and the whole housing has been upgraded to metal. The Prusa's extruder is 3D printed, but it came with a set of genuine Bond Tech gears. So for the extruder, they both work really well, but I prefer the Creality Sprite extruder with the full metal body. For the hot end, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses a titanium heat break so it can print up to 300 degrees Celsius, while the Prusa uses a genuine E3D V6 hot end, which can also print up to 300 degrees Celsius. So for the hot end, I will pick the Prusa genuine E3D V6 as the winner. For the motherboard, Creality uses its own 32-bit motherboard brand, while Prusa uses an INZ Rambo 8-bit motherboard. The INZ Rambo is a much higher quality motherboard with features like a power panic that will be good enough to compensate for the old 8-bit processor, as the 8-bit processor is still fast enough to process simple G-code. 
So for the motherboard, I will pick the Prusa Einzi Rambo as the winner. For the stepper drivers, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses TMC2209 and the Prusa MK3S Plus uses TMC2130. These two drivers are really similar in terms of features and price. They are both from Trinamic and support sensorless homing, but the Ender 3 S1 Pro didn't enable sensorless homing. As we are just comparing hardware, I will give this round a draw. For the power supply, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses a Creality brand 350 watt power supply, and the Prusa uses a brand name Delta 240 watt power supply. Since the Delta PSU costs around $100 and the Meanwell costs $40, even if I assume the Creality one is as good as Meanwell, it still just costs around $40, so I will give this round to the Prusa Delta PSU. For the screen, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses a D-Win 4.3-inch touchscreen, while the Prusa MK3S Plus uses a classic 2004 LCD screen. So, the winner of the screen is the Ender 3 S1 Pro's D-Win touchscreen. For the heated bed and print surface, the Prusa heated bed is lighter. It's a higher quality and can reach up to 120 degrees Celsius. It doesn't require leveling springs to manually level the corners, and it uses a double-sided PEI spring steel sheet print surface. While the Ender 3 S1 Pro has the same heated bed as the Ender 3, it still uses leveling springs and requires leveling the corner manually. It came with insulation under the bed, the maximum temperature of this bed is 110 degrees Celsius, and it uses a single-sided PEI spring steel print surface. For this round, I will still pick the Prusa print bed as the winner. For the sensors, the Ender 3 S1 uses a CR Touch auto bed leveling sensor, which is a BL Touch variant, and it works fine. The filament runout sensor is a mechanical sensor with plastic housing, and it's attached to the filament holder at the top. The Prusa MK3S Plus uses an optical filament sensor that supports auto filament feeding, and the bed leveling sensor is a Super Pinda, which is the best leveling sensor according to my own test. So I will pick the Prusa as the winner. For the appearance and convenient features, the Ender 3 Pro uses a one-piece injection mold base. It also came with convenient features like the X and Y axis belt tensioners, drawers, and LED lights. The Prusa doesn't have any of these features, so I will pick the Ender 3 S1 Pro as the winner. So, for all the hardware, the cost of the hardware on the MK3S Plus is more expensive as many of them are brand names. For the 3D printed parts of the Prusa, there are advantages and disadvantages. They are not as good as metal parts or injection mold parts, but they are easy to reprint and replace. For this part, the maximum score is 20. I will give 14 to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and 18 to the Prusa MK3S Plus. For print quality, the Ender 3 S1 Pro is good enough for most hobbyists. With the new Sprite Extruder, it can print any filament that the Prusa can print. For general 3D printing, you can't see any significant differences between them. But for something that requires high accuracy, the Prusa will deliver better results. For example, many people are still complaining about these overshooting corners of a simple calibration cube from Creality Printers, as the X and Y axes slow down at the corners, and the firmware has to adjust the amount of filament extrusion to prevent this. A Prusa with well-tweaked firmware and a slicer can avoid this kind of issue without needing manual tweaking. The Ender 3 S1 Pro is already pretty good, but the Prusa MK3S Plus is still slightly better in print quality. So, I will give 16 points out of 20 to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and 18 points to the Prusa MK3S Plus. For print speed, the Prusa MK3S Plus has an advantage over the Ender 3 S1 Pro. The linear motion system and the lighter print bed can print at 80 mm per minute at a normal speed and up to 200 mm per minute with reasonable quality, while the Creality can print at 60 mm per minute at a normal speed and up to 100 mm per minute with reasonable quality. So, I will give 6 out of 10 points to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and 8 out of 10 to the Prusa MK3S Plus. Next, we will talk about the software, including the firmware and the slicer. 
For the firmware, they are both based in Marlin, but Prusa's firmware is tweaked and modified to work much better. They have in-house software engineers to work with the firmware. For Creality, it just uses standard Marlin firmware. It's in line with most other 3D printers and is fully functional with no major issues. For the slicer, Prusa's own slicer is designed for their printers. I generally don't have to tweak any settings to get pretty good results. For Creality, like other budget 3D printers, it uses Cura. Cura is also very powerful and it was designed to work with Ultimaker printers, but it's also compatible with other printers. So for the firmware and slicer, I will give 6 points to Creality and 9 points to Prusa. For the workflow, the Ender 3 S1 Pro is pretty good. It's easier to feed in filament with the new Sprite extruder than the old Creality extruder. The bed and nozzle are heating up quite fast. For printing PLA, it took less than 2 minutes to heat up the nozzle to 215 degrees and the bed to 60 degrees. For bed leveling, the Ender 3 S1 Pro uses a CR Touch auto bed leveling sensor, which is a variant of the BL Touch and it works fine, but you still need to use the bed corner leveling springs under the bed to make the bed as level as possible before using auto bed leveling. The screen UI has all the features you need, but some features are not that easy to find. I covered the details in my Ender 3 S1 Pro review. For the Prusa, it has an optical filament sensor and firmware that supports filament auto feeding, the nozzle, and the heated bed's heat up time is in line with the Ender 3 S1 Pro. The Super Pinda bed leveling sensor is the best sensor I have ever tested in terms of both probing speed and accuracy. There are no more leveling springs under the bed, the bed is relatively flat, and the leveling sensor will do the job. The screen is not a touch screen, but the menu structure is well designed. So for the workflow, I will give a 4 out of 5 to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and a 5 out of 5 to the Prusa MK3S Plus. For documentation and file management, the Prusa is clearly the winner. The documentation is very clear and well organized. The download pages for the firmware and the slicer are well managed. For Creality, this part still needs to be improved. For example, when I try to download the Ender 3 S1 Pro firmware, I can't see any files available to download. Even for the Ender 3 S1, there are a few different versions, but the descriptions are not clear and I have no idea what the difference between this C axis limit firmware is and what the HW24 S1 firmware is. So I will give the Ender 3 S1 Pro or Creality 3 out of 5 and give a full 5 points to Prusa. For power consumption, some people think that it's not important at all, as some states in the US just charge 10 to 15 cents per kilowatt hour. However, here in California, we pay more than 40 cents for high usage. If you have many printers, the energy bill is definitely something you should care about. The Ender 3 S1 Pro consumed 179 watt hours to print a 3D Benchy, which is pretty good compared to the original Ender 3, which consumed more than 200 watt hours. With the exact same G code, the Prusa MK3S Plus consumed 141 watt hours, which is 21% less. So, I will give 4 out of 5 points to the Ender 3 S1 Pro and 5 points to the Prusa MK3S Plus. Okay. These are the final scores that I have for both printers. If you have a budget of around $500 and are looking to get a quality first printer or a second printer with many updated features, get the Ender 3 S1 Pro. It prints really well right out of the box and it can also print a large variety of different filament with pretty good print quality. It may not be as good as the Prusa MK3S Plus in every single factor, but it is still good for general 3D printing and is better than most hobbyist printers on the market. If you have more experience with 3D printing and you have a budget of around $800 and you wouldn't mind spending around five to eight hours to actually put the machine together, get the Prusa MK3S Plus kit version. If spending $500 and $1,200 is no big difference to you, and you just want the best printer for around $1,000, get the Prusa MK3S Plus fully assembled version. There's not much that you can go wrong with there. Of course, my scoring system is probably not going to be perfect for everyone, as each person has their different preferences and requirements and expectations, so they're going to judge things differently. 
However, this is the most easy to understand and best way that I could think of to compare these printers. I hope that you did find this helpful. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.